Hey YouTube, what's going on now? I was uh, sitting around thinking about growing up as a kid, south side of Chicago. I met my, my very first outside of family friend. <clears throat> I was about seven or eight years old walking, walking down this alleyway about, I don't know, 50 paces from another kid that was just like across the street, uh, 50 pace apart walking. I decided a little punk I was to start throwing rocks at him, get his attention. Stupid kid stuff. And uh, so I'm, I'm not trying to hurt him. I'm throwing rocks around him, just being ignorant. He never paid one mind to me kept on walking, never even turned around, just kept walking. Then we got to our street, we actually lived on the same street together, and uh, his mom would sit in the window of the house and watch him walk home every day. So we got real close to his house, I'm still throwing rocks around him, his mama, <laughs> Bless her heart, rest her soul. Sweetest woman I ever met. Um, woman had a voice that could pierce through, through a uh, bulletproof vest. She, uh, she could scold you with her voice without putting a hand on you. So she calls me and him over. She said, get your asses over to this window right now. She wouldn't move. She's sitting in that window. She wasn't getting out. She wanted my name, my address, my mother's and father's name, where I lived, phone up, everything. She wanted to know everything. And she scolded me up and down. Just, you don't throw rocks at my son, blah, blah, blah. She's like, I'm going to call your parents and we're going to have a discussion. Nah, I'm, nah, I'm shaking. Because back in the day, uh, neighbors, they, they pretty much had open will to whoop your ass if you was messing around. Because she never left the house. But just the tone in her voice whooped my ass. And I knew she was calling my parents. And when I got home, I was going to get it again. But probably whooping <laughs> So anyway, she does, she ends up calling my mom. But my mama never whooped me for it. She just told me, son, you done pissed the neighbors off and you have to go over there every day for two weeks for an hour and play nicely with that boy you was throwing rocks at. Well, I did it. I had to do it. I had no choice. I was seven or eight. I'm 52. And we're still like brothers. <laughs> Those two weeks were some of the best times I ever had as a child. And uh, he's like I said, he's like a brother to me. Always has been since that time. But that's been playing on my mind. The older we get, the faster time goes, and the further we get apart from those friendships because of life. You know, we t we don't talk for a year or so, but it's like yesterday. We don't we don't we don't miss a beat with each other. We like blood. So just remember who your true friends are. You know, friendship is is easy when it's convenient. And when they stick around through everything you've been through, when, when, when they, they deal with the hard times with you, and, and yeah, there's no give and take as far as monetary, and, and you owe me this, you owe me that. No, you don't owe me nothing. If I call you brother, you're brother. That's all there is to it. So. That's just one of the little stories I've been thinking about as a child growing up. There'll be more, and I'm going to talk at you.